Hey guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to overclock an AMD Black Edition CPU. This um, will uh, start up a whole series of how to overclock an AMD CPU. So, today I'm just going to show you the basics. Now, before I get into restarting my computer and going into the BIOS, I just want to show you if you have a Vista 64 machine or just regular Vista machine, I want to show you um, how to get into your system properties. You want to go onto your into your start menu and go to computer as you can see now you have to go to your computer and you can right click it and just click properties okay. once you're in your properties it'll tell you um, what your uh, what processor you have how much RAM you have what uh, type of operating system you have Usually, if you have two gigabytes of RAM or lower, you're usually your system's usually going to come with 32-bit. But since I've got a four gigabyte machine, it's going to have a 64-bit operating system to fu fully utilize the four gigs. So, um, as you can see, I already we already overclocked it to 2.9, but today I'm going to show you um, I'm going to overclock it to three gigahertz, and I'm going to show you how to um, overclock in the BIOS. Now, this is um, a guide for only people who have AMD CPUs and are black edition CPUs. The way you can figure this out is if you didn't build your computer yourself, you can go and uh, download a program called CPU-Z. Search it on Google. The website is like CPU ID. So you're going to need admin you're going to need a um, administrator um, on your computer to use the program. Okay, so what you're going to see is that it tells you um, like what your processor is, AMD. I've got an AMD Athlon X2 5000 Plus Black Edition. It also tells you your socket type, which hopefully if you're using a Black Edition CPU, it's either socket AM2, socket AM2 Plus, or socket AM3. Um, it tells you your architecture of the CPU. Um, this is a 65 nanometer. And it tells you your core voltage. Um, so I'll get into the volts and everything later. Um, so it also tells you your family and all that stuff, and it tells you your multiplier. It's saying that I'm at multiplier of 14.5 with a bus speed of 200 megahertz, okay? And it shows you my core speed, 2.9, okay? So it um, tells you your cores and how many threads you have, and then the version of the uh, CPU-Z, okay? So make sure you download the appropriate CPU-Z for your operating system. They have a 64-bit edition and a 32-bit. Make sure you get the Vista 64 if you have Vista 64 bit. Okay. So I'm gonna go to my start menu and just restart my computer, and we're going to get in into into the BIOS. Okay. Okay. So as you can see here, I'm gonna turn on the light up keys. Um, I'm pointing to the delete button, not the backspace button. Do not screw this up. Make sure that when you get when you want to get into the BIOS depending on your motherboard manufacturer for most ASUS boards you're going to press the delete button on system reboot or power on so you can see it's showing my motherboard name it goes into the post and straight into the BIOS okay now you can see all of these tabs you've got at the top you've got exit tools boot power advanced and main you want to go down you want to go to advanced now, if you're wondering, the motherboard I'm using is an ASUS M3A78-CM motherboard. And um, with most ASUS boards, the um, uh, the menu or the BIOS menu will look somewhat the same. Just look for something that says jumper configuration, jumper free configuration. And if your motherboard does not have that, um, you can go into CPU config and so on. Okay. Now, one thing you want to do before you overclock with your Black Edition uh, AMD CPU, um, you can go into you want to go into your CPU config first, and then you want to scroll down, scroll down 
till you see an option called cool and quiet okay and this is an option that was made uh, by um, I'm pretty sure it's either an AMD or an, a um, an Asus thing it's where the uh, BIOS makes your CPU um, consume less energy and then um, thus not being able to overclock so you want to if it's already enabled you just want to simply click on it go into the little menu and hit disabled okay so you want to make sure it's disabled okay do not touch any of this other stuff like the guard error don't touch any of that stuff okay you can see it shows my multipliers and everything okay um and you'll see all these other things like chipset onboard devices configuration blah 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 go to your jumper free configuration if you don't have it just look around for it look for something that has to do with CPU overclocking if you have a board specifically for overclocking it'll most likely just say CPU overclocking so you want to click on that and you'll see all of these options okay you've got GPU overclocking PCI Express overclocking and CPU overclocking so don't touch any of the autos at all okay with black edition CPUs you do not have to touch any of the stuff that says auto okay except for what you're going to see is you're going to see this you're going to see processor frequency multiplier at auto you want to move it down to um, you know whatever it is okay it'll show you okay 11 is 2.2 gigahertz okay you don't want to underclock because it just it what's the point you know it's not going to make your processor faster um, one thing before overclocking um, make sure you have a great heat sink or um, cooling solution on your CPU um, if you go liquid cooling that's great because liquid cooling is great for overclocking um, if you have a really good heat sink like a, a Sunbeam core contact freezer like we're using right now um, go ahead and use it you want to have a heat sink with a nice copper base and aluminum uh, heat sink fins that's big enough to um, you know get the heat off so yeah so you can see with black edition CPUs you have all of these options you can go all the way to uh, the dangerous territory uh, territory of let's see hmm. go all the way to 7 gigahertz with this processor but that doesn't mean the system is going to remain stable at that uh, frequency. That's when we're talking about liquid helium and liquid nitrogen. So that's the pros to get that high. You don't want to go anywhere um, above, I would say with this processor, 3300 um, megahertz or which is 3.3 gigahertz um, without liquid cooling installed. Okay. Um, with air cooling I would go as far as maybe 3.1 and that's it. Okay. So, um, our, what we're at now is 2.9, so we're going to easily click on 3 gigahertz. Now, the one thing about overclocking that's good is you don't want to go too far your first time, because if you, say if your, let's just say, if your processor's stock frequency is at 2.6, you don't want to go to 2 points, you don't want to go to 2.7, you want to go to 2.8, like almost, almost like a, um, a, you know, a times two thing. So you want to go to 2.8, and then after that, go to 2.9. Then if it's stable after 2.9, 3 gigahertz, then 3.1. So we're going to hit up uh, 3 gigahertz right now. You can see I'm at an X15 multiplier, or just 15 multiplier. You're going to um, look at your menu, because it's most likely different than mine, and you want to look for the save and exit uh, number. So I want to hit F10. Okay, a little menu is going to come up. Save configuration changes and exit now. Yes. So it's going to reboot the system. Okay. The motherboard's going to come back up like it did before. Okay. And then it's going to now. If you see the Windows loading thing, that means it's a successful overclock. Okay. Definitely a successful overclock. And then in our next video, guys, we will uh, talk about how to check your system stability with a numerous amount of programs you can use. Okay. So once you've seen once you've seen that, it can get into the operating system.